Now, a lot of things still really piss me off about my life and my past, but as I've learned the hard way over the past few months, there's usually not a whole lot I can do to change them. There is one thing, though, that still gnaws at me after 16 years, and I can change it right now. What pisses me off is that when my father died, nobody asked me if I wanted to give him a eulogy. Like in an ABC After School special, or a really cool movie of the week starring someone like Andrew McCarthy. <laughs> I thought it was inappropriate to ask at the time. So I didn't. Well, I wanted to. Well, I have no intention of getting into what a great man I think he was, or how he suffered from a laundry list of many different exciting illnesses, or that he's buried in a military cemetery somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Florida, or how much I loved him, because that would get us nowhere. But there is one thing that I do want to tell you about. It was getting near the end, just before he died, and uh, it was a few weeks before he died, and my dad was in his hospital bed, totally drugged up on morphine. And my mom was right where she should be at a time like that, right by his side. And suddenly, there was a knock at the door. A tall man who my mother describes as a holy roller <laughs> ducked his head inside the hospital room. Now, when I hear holy roller, I think of a colorful monk turning handsprings down a hallway. But, <laughs> but that's probably just me. Excuse me, ma'am. Would you mind if my friends and I came in and prayed over the patient for a while? Pray over the patient? No. Uh, my mother, clutching an outdated copy of People magazine for strength, and being as diplomatic as only a, a mother can be while wearing a look of polite, abject, 100 complete total fear, says, no, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry, but he's rested. Clearly, she did not have this in mind. Then, without warning, my father wakes up from his Rip Van Winkle coma for the first time in weeks and says, Come on in! <laughs> Come on in! Come on in! Come on in! <laughs> and come on in, they do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the hospital is proud to present, live at your death, six teenage Christians. <laughs> The group leader, who my mother is now describing as the head honcho holy roller, enters the room followed by his five devoted followers. And now my mother is defeated. My father smiles in a way that he would have described as a shit-eating grin. <laughs> he looks like he's won some sort of grand prize. Now the 16 age Christians circle the bed, they join hands, and they begin to pray over my father. Now at first you gotta think, you know, these are mighty giving Christians, you know, and they are, but it was the day before Halloween, and all six of the mighty giving Christians were dressed as giant Crayola crayons. <laughs> One of the crayons was praying in tongues. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Now my mother stood mouth open wide, staring at a scene being played out in front of her that no nun in any saint named school anywhere could have ever prepared her for. And now throughout the session, my father sat straight up for the first time in weeks and he laughed and laughed and he laughed at every stupid second of it. Drugs or no drugs, no matter what the situation, Frank Blaney knew how to appreciate a good laugh. <laughs> Hours after this moment in time happened, my mother relayed the story to me over the phone a thousand miles away. Now, whether they're the right words or not, I'm usually not at a loss for them. <laughs> this time I was at a loss. All I could picture, all I could see were crayons. <laughs> all these crayons, all the colors from the big Crayola box of 64 with the cool ass sharpener in the back when I was a kid in grade school. But he, saw the colors too. The old colors, the more exotic ones, the ones from far off places with names like Burnt Umber and Fawn. And the ever ambiguous first cousins, Violet Blue and Blue Violet. <laughs> <laughs> but he saw the colors, man. The colors all spinning in a Jimi Hendrix, mellow yellow, Timothy Leary, purple fucking haze, man. And he never stopped laughing. 
My mother said that when the 16H Christians finally finished, Amina, amen, when they began to leave, my father could be heard pleading, calling after them, you can come back. You can come back again. He wasn't stupid. How often do you get a fucking giant Christian crayon floor show praying in tongues over your body while you're dying and your wife has to watch? <laughs> Not that fucking often. After that, my mother and I agreed that there was no rhyme or reason to this world. I will have to remember that more often when I can't change the things that I can't change, which is a lot. Finally, after much silence on the phone, when my mother told me this story 16 years ago, all I could think to ask her was, what color were they? <laughs> the crayons. Well, she told me that she really hadn't thought about it, but they were blue and yellow. I said, blue and yellow? Blue and yellow? Are you fucking kidding me? Blue and yellow? How about robin's egg and daffodil? I think that sounds a lot better. My mom knew, my dad knew how to appreciate a good laugh, even when he was dying. That's how he was. We should all be so lucky. Thanks.